Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And can Meshtastic get any more amazing or fantastic? As they say, the sky is the limit. Well, is it? Well, I had a guy the, this morning talking to me from 28,000 feet, so that's pretty cool. He was on board an aircraft, the Delta Connection flight. It was Endeavor Air. And uh, I figured out what flight it was. It was uh, flight 5080, and that is in range. I'm in Toronto, and you can see he was up over Lake Erie. At that time, for about 15 minutes, I was in contact with him on board this aircraft. Had a very strong signal of minus 50, the Razzie, which is a very good signal. And of course, he's right up uh, above me, uh, 28,000 feet line of sight. But what it's proving here is that you can actually use Meshtastic in an aircraft to communicate with the ground. And that is pretty incredible. It may not be, it was probably not legal to be doing this by FAA rules to be running a transmitter in a commercial aircraft. So be careful there, but it does prove that it does work. And uh, there was a guy last night, first of all, on his way to Frankfurt. And uh, that would be LH-471, that's the Lufthansa, Lufthansa, yes, the airline, the German airline. We're going to look that one up. But uh, we go down here, and here is the guy, JFK Milwaukee, flyby, hello. He's trying to raise uh, anybody a connection there. And you can see it starts around 8.33 a.m. And uh, he was constantly transmitting until about 8.47. Approximately about 15 minutes there. So uh, he did not have his GPS on. So I didn't get, um, <clears throat> didn't actually figure out where he was. But the other guy, the, the, uh, the German guy, uh, D350. So we got N1. He calls himself Node 1. Come on, focus camera. There we go. And uh, let's just go back and take a look at, okay, there's node one and D Delta 350 or D350. Alex Orleans, two, I guess that could possibly be his name. He's the guy that was on the flight to Germany and node one is the guy he doesn't have his GPS up, but um, Node 1 is the guy on the flight from JFK to uh, stopping over in, in Detroit and on his way to Milwaukee. And this is really interesting. The, there he is there, the Delta Delta 350, the, the German flight, and it's showing us out over the lake. Now, these flights, when they take off from the airport, and I will show you there is the airport there, if they take off this way, they will loop around and come around and go this way. So we're going to look that up on Flight Radar 24 and see if that flight actually indeed loop around and was he actually there. Um, obviously he was. And uh, we're going to take a look at that right now. This is really, really interesting to see people on board aircraft actually transmitting and communicating with Meshtastic. So let's go back to... First of all, let's take a look at what he was saying. He says, starts off LH-471 to Frankfurt. Now, the guy with the question mark is a neighbor of mine. He was receiving this at the time, didn't know what was going on, I guess, was questioning it. He says, on plane by Toronto. And then he said just the same thing over and over again a few times. And then we'll do it like he's he's talking with somebody while he's on the plane. Uh, we're not picking up that person. And then this morning at 830 in the morning, we're receiving this guy from uh, JFK Milwaukee flight, which I I'll show you how I figured out w what flight he was on. OK, stand by, guys. Here we go. OK, so how did I know what flight this guy was on? Well, I did a little bit of detective work. I narrowed things down here. He was communicating with me between 8.33 and 8.47 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Um, we're about one hour out from JFK by air. So his flight would have had to have taken off about 7.30 in the morning. So I just went through all of these different flights here looking for one that was about 7. That one was a little bit too early. 
but uh, I did find this one down here. It was 7.25 in the morning. That matched up perfectly. And uh, it was on its way to Detroit. He had a layover in Detroit, and then he went on to Milwaukee. So this is definitely the flight. I'm almost 100% sure. I would love to hear from this guy. If you were watching my channel, you'd probably uh, be interested to know about the contact I had with you and uh, that I documented it. So let's go over to Flight Radar 24. Now, Flight Radar 24 is in Zulu time, or what we call UTC. And uh, here we are at uh, 1233, which is the same as well, it's four hours ahead, so 8.33 a.m. And here is the flight from JFK to Detroit. And I am right here in Mississauga, just outside of Toronto. And this is where he would have been right at 8.33. Now I had a communication with him between 8.33 and 8.47. So let's play this and let's watch it go all the way to 8 or 12.47 UTC. Zulu time. And you can see all of this time he was within range. And communicating with my ground station and the whole time he had a very strong signal and there's a uh, 40 41 and his last transmission was at 847 so 1247 UTC and we will check his altitude now they're coming into Detroit so they're coming into land so, okay, there. Now let's go over and look at his altitude. Okay, he was at 22,000 there because he's coming into land. But if we go back, let's just go back here. 1239, 1231. <clears throat> at that point in time, yeah, 27,900 feet. So there you go. That's how I uh, had contact with that guy. He was between 28,000 and 22,000 while he was communicating. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. So I found him on Flight Aware. This is the DLH 741 flight. Right here is the Toronto Island. This is Lake Ontario. The last time we picked him up was right about here. And sure enough, the flight does take off, like I thought, looped around, and uh, right about there is where we picked him up. So, now this time here, 8.06 a.m. is actually the time it landed in Frankfurt. Um, they don't really say the time here, but it does say over here. Uh, hold on a sec. There we go. On the 18th, they departed at 6.34 p.m. So, yeah, around, uh, that's typically the time they push back from the gate, 6.34. So, yeah, take off, loop around where we last picked them up would have been about 7 p.m. local time. So, there you go. Really, really cool. We had two different guys in one day in about a 12-hour period. Uh, yeah, both uh, transmitting mesh-tastic from aircraft. So, really cool, guys. So, I'm looking for somebody just like this to climb my tower. Uh, yeah, if you're a tower climber, rigger, or uh, just a hand that likes to climb up, or a girl like this who just, I don't know, just loves to climb, get, a little, get in touch with me. I need somebody to go to the top of my tower and install the two mesh tastic antennas. I do it myself, but I messed up my knee recently, so having a little bit of trouble uh, climbing. I don't want to go up there and get stuck up there, unless I'm stuck up there with her. So there it is, guys. And actually, it was this one right here that was actually communicating with the aircraft, even down here on the ground. And yeah, so I want to put this up on the tower so we can get more range and... Uh, yeah, if you are a tower rigger, a ham, or just somebody that just likes to climb like that uh, crazy Russian girl, get in contact with me. My contact is in the description. Thanks, guys. Oh, look at that. 
20 hours ago. That's the guy that was on the, the flight to Germany. Really cool. And that would have been right out there. Excellent.